it's a hell western moment. That's it right. really is. You no, know, we yeah. just have to, and I'm just to see you and knowing Morgan Carter. Yes. You know, I'm lifelong Chicago. Oh. And we lost $140 million to Dorothy Tillman that we were supposed to be building something on 47th and State. Like what you're looking at on some of that stuff right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the hotel. Mm. We, we had that money. That was Ray Kroc. This, <laughs> this is Ray Kroc's neighborhood when he first started McDonald's. Wow. At 39th and Langley. Okay. You know, and he left that money, but man, they, there was a great conspiracy around how it winded up on 130, how to consult this and the consult that. You know, but, she's showing uh, all of the photos that you're in. You're on the right track. I'm going to tell you. Because when uh, Alderman Dow called me and told me that uh, she was endorsing Brandon, see, people a lot of times they get arrogant and they tell the wrong people to kiss the ASSS. Oh, 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 oh. And see, I'm saying that was. Lori Lightfoot, yeah, and uh, the other girl, uh, Preckwinkle, she made the same mistake. She made the same mistake. She had made all possibilities, but she had offered too many people to her rear part. She had. And, wow. and people, that's reaping what you sow. See them? Yes. 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 We, we, we have, uh, let's see, we had Charles Holland. Yes, we don't have it on the line. Welcome to the show, Mr. Holland. How are you? I'm good, madam. How about yourself? Oh, just fine. I hear him now. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing too. We're at the Swinton <laughs> Mansion with uh, Mr. Perkins over here, who is an advocate for uh, the candidate. And so, oh, oh, well, we got something in common. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, can you put the camera back on sure. him so that he can? Uh, yeah. Miss Lavetta is the new camera operator. You didn't know that, did you? You had to work the camera. <laughs> well, one or but not, what I need to say is that, see, Alderman Pat died. I've been knowing her like a long time, maybe 30, 40 years, and she has always been dignified. See them? And a lady. And oh, sorry, let me I turn saw this down. How Lori Lightfoot could like kick her to the curb and she would have to grab another candidate. She put the two budgets together ah. for people like Lori Lightfoot because she's intelligent like that. God gave her a gift to be able to do them numbers in such a way. Okay. So all these major budgets came through the city. That was Alderman Dow's work. Uh -huh. Mr. Wilkins, can you tell us again about your daughter and education and how uh, how important it is for Brandon for Brandon Johnson's position and what they represent? See, I, I certainly can. And see, they would make you think the news people and the journalists and the other people that this is. A foregone conclusion that Brandon not even worry about mounting a significant campaign when we are at a critical junction. My daughter, she's a assistant principal at Persian School at 33rd here at Calumet. And Persian, he was a great uh, U.S. Army general. You know, I was in the Army, so I, that, for her to be there is nice. And, and all my family members, like they were in education. Mm -hmm. Like my wife, she worked at Jackie Robinson School. She worked at the Wadsworth School, reorganizing it. And Paul Vallis did uh, appoint her to the Office of Investigations. Okay. I think because she made so many reports of thefts where Whitey was taking the stuff out to school and taking it home and other places, you know. So he appointed her as a deputy chief investigator as, as he appointed Mary Viff Vanderwiller, who was a Chicago Sun-Times columnist. Uh -huh. He appointed her head of the Office of Investigations. Uh -huh. And my wife was under her and they were really trying to do something. But this, we've got to show 
that we still have a presence in Chicago. That's right. And this whole Brandon Johnson thing is about, do we exist? Are we the remnants? Are we done or what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so we much. Appreciate that, yes, Mr. Perkins. You quite Thanks welcome. for sharing that because mm -hmm. we are we are uh, advocates for Brandon Johnson. We know that that he is uh, probably the best choice because he's he's an educator. He he, he works for the for the people for the children. Anybody that's trying to help us bring our youth, our young people, our adults to the table so they can vote and express themselves. And, and, and it's okay, like my son back here, he's got some $35,000 plans to renovate this and put seven units in. And he's the way of the future. Okay, yeah, that's Three, right. Nine, you can, you can, that go me. Him. So I'm um, that's and Brandon is represents another generation. Yeah. And it's good that he and we got to be ready to pass the baton and encourage. Right. I mean, you know, otherwise we're gonna be useless. That makes sense. Thank you, Mr. Now can you did you all hear Mr. Perkins? Yeah, I heard him. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And uh Charles Howlett is working very closely. You can't see him, Mr. Perkins, but he's working very closely to make this a reality. And I've known- So is he in the uh, campaign or does he, you know- Mr. Perkins want to know, are you in the campaign? Uh, yes, sir. I'm with the campaign and uh, I'm part of the team that's responsible for delivering the west side of the city. He's responsible for delivering the West. Let me, let, me, let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. I am part of the team right. that's part responsible team. for delivering the West side of the city. Okay. All right. All right. That's his responsibility. Well, you need to work. I think it's a guy if he's still around named Mark Carter. Mm -hmm. That's uh, on the West side. And we did a lot of demonstrations for jobs and employment with the union. So. Yeah, they're out there, and uh, and I think the possibilities are great. Like I've been working for guys getting out of prison for the last 35, 40 years. So I'm gonna tell all of that ex-offender population, yes, you know, to get on board with the brother and give him an opportunity. There you go. There you go. Hey, we need to give the brother a chance because uh, I mean, they, if the community would just look at the history of what these candidates have done in the past, they will be able to make a logical decision about who they want to be the mayor of Chicago. And if they would listen to what they're saying now and their vision for the city in the future, they would know which one is the, the better candidate of the two. Of the two, yes, that's true. Okay. Okay, that's true. Mr. Perkins didn't hear that. Oh, Mr. Perkins, no, what what did you say, Charles? Again, so Mr. Perkins can hear what you said because let me see if I let me see if I can turn my stuff up over here a little bit. Okay, turn it down. You want to come Tell on, come, on, come, on, come sit at the table. Come sit at the table. Yeah, come on here. Hold on a second. You see my coat and everything. I'm you look fast. Walk out the door. I'm sorry, Mr. Perkins. I'm so glad we were able to catch you. I'm so glad. Sit right here. Thank you. So we got Mr. Perkins at the table now. And uh, let him, let, let now so he can hear and see you. Charles, mm. can you repeat what you just said? Well, it, it was, I was uh, 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 adding to the, the to the uh, suggestion that, that, uh, if people knew what they have done in the past, yes, then they would know, you know, which one to deal with. And I was just adding that on top of that, if they just listen, yes, at this point to what is being said by each of the candidates, they it would be a clear choice as to which candidate you know you go with. Okay, okay, that makes one sense. one has a progressive. Uh, okay. There's a lot. There's a lot more to it than that. I think at this point, this campaign lacks the energy 
I don't, you know, I don't feel the energy or the vibrancy. I don't see the power of a, a person raising some revenues for street forces and other activities that do take places in campaigns. You got a lot of knowledge to cover in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. April, April, yeah, like April fourth. Yeah. So I'm just saying, your your people, then yeah. they got to hit the ground running. Yeah. All right, all right, let me just say in response to that, there are uh, lots of ground troops, lots of ground troops. There is uh, money on the street for ground troops. And so anybody that wants to uh, uh, participate just merely needs to plug in. And uh, I agree, we need to raise the temperature. Uh, uh, you know, we need to raise the height, heighten the, the energy at this point. And my understanding is that was one of the uh, primary reasons for this event tonight to talk yes. about how how do we raise the energy and uh, right. temperature and uh, uh, get people you know really excited about yeah. this race. Yes, yes. Yeah, and and you just got such a short window to the. But it's a good window. It's a, it's yeah, enough time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for those of us who've been out here before, we know it's enough time, right? We just got to come on with it. That's come right. on with it. Yeah. And, 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 and the teachers union, they they uh, they very adamant about their candidates and SEIU and endorsements of that nature. They're not small talk because they got black and white ground forces all over the place. So, Correct. You know, Correct. And that's part of the, the, the yeah. ground for their their ground. I didn't mean all right, let me mean cut you off, but their ground forces all over town. They are part of that, a big part of, of the ground forces. The unions are part of the big a big part of the ground forces out here. Again, we just need to raise the noise level and, and the yes. energy level. And that's what yes. and that's part of what this is about, is my understanding. Yes, it is. It is. That's why we're over here at the Swift Mansion. We're gonna have these, we're gonna get some of these ex offenders been coming through it for the last 35 years to kind of plug in because okay. they need to be involved in something significant. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. In the world. That's right, that's right. Come on, the baby it's chair right here. That's right, that's and right. Do you have any veteran? So we're gonna be plugging um uh, uh, Back in with you. It's been great talking to you, and we're going to be working right, right, as, as we have for so many years. Well, thank you, sir. Right, <laughs> right, because that's what time it is. It's time for all of us who've been out here on the ground doing what we do, and for all those who've been out here talking <laughs> about doing some stuff. It's time to go. It's time so, to go. It's time, time to go. go. And so. Now, Maybe not next week or not next month. No. <laughs> right now. Right now. Just like we on here right now talking about this thing. It that's what time it is. Right now. That's right. Son. That's right. All right. Put these plans together. We gotta do it. Well, all right. So 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 if you've got people who can plug in, just let us know. Talk to Wanda or, and, yeah. and we can we can uh get them involved. So that that's that's not a problem. Okay. He gonna let me know, Charles, and now. All right. you, and Charles, we got it bunched over here to the Swift Mansion. It's on uh, forty five hundred South Michigan Avenue. And yeah, it's, yeah, a land, it's a landmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar yes. with it. It's been a long time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and and stuff been going on there a long time. So yeah, I'm, yeah. Right. I'm familiar <laughs> with it. He said, uh, "Mr. Perkins said, good stuff." Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity as well for us to utilize this space and uh, do some of those, uh, you know, uh, more intimate settings where we perfect. Can work out. Perfect. Yeah. That's that's a perfect setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can get them over there. Yeah. Nice time. We're gonna get them names to you very soon. Okay, he's mm -hmm. gonna get the names to you. So, all right, all right, yeah, that's perfect setting. Yeah, perfect. perfect. All right, all right, I'm impressed. We did something, and then, and then Pat Dow, mm -hmm. she stepped a, a immediately away from Lori and said, I'm gonna endorse Brandon, uh -huh. and she is a significant figure. 
Yeah, I'm here on the South Side. Okay. okay. Well, Charles actually worked with uh, Pat uh, during the Congress Zone on the West Side. So he knows her capabilities. Yeah, well, yeah, Pat is a long time progressive. Uh, yeah. What did you yeah. say, Charles? No, I'm just saying, Pat is a long time progressive at a thinker and doer. That's right. You know, so, so, oh, yeah, she's, uh, She's always been on the right side of things. <laughs> Ever since I've known, I've known her way back. We go way back to to the Harold Washington days. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, this is the new movement. And look, it's the brand. Well, I don't know about new. It's uh, it's a continuation. All right. What okay. we've been doing all the time. Lord, we hurt ourselves tremendously and <laughs> separated from all of them at that time. She really hurt herself. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the uh, no satisfaction would be a certain that Jasmine found out how they break Chicago from Stony Island to Western. Never anything, never, you know, dead. No, no. Just, just like this same way. That, that's the same way the police force stays white. Mm. Okay. Now, I went to the police academy in 76 and stayed for a couple of years. It was with the Renaud Robinson injunction. He wrote everything in a brief that ever needs to be written about the police department. We try to get more of the youth information and stuff like that. They just, they, they were doing, everybody was doing their own thing. Mm. Well, mm. So we have a history maker here, and we've yes. got to connect. And that's what we were talking about earlier, child, is really getting that message across to young people about the history and putting it before them where they see the importance of this historical movement because for the, uh, and I tell you, I mentioned Harold Washington's name yesterday at a meeting. And a guy walked right past me with a Harold Washington button. <laughs> 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 it was like, uh, okay, this is a, this is a story. You know, those are still valuable <laughs> buttons. And uh, so sometimes, you know, just like with Harold, um, it was a lot of spiritual kind of movements. Yeah. I mean, the things that were happening, and we didn't even see it, it was coming, and, you know. And so Brandon is the same kind of way. So we're going to do everything we can to uh, get this word out and uh, help him get across the finish line. Absolutely. All right. It's yeah, not it, choice. <laughs> yeah, and I think you're right. We need to, you know, make the connection that that this is uh this is not new, but it is a continuation of the struggle that we've all we've been in all the while. And so they yeah. need to see that they are the the new iteration of the That's of right. this struggle and connect it connect now to then and the future. That's right. So that That's they can right. see it and feel it. That's right. Makes sense to us. Going to be the so if it, it, what what is a message that you would like to leave for our viewers in reference to why it's important for them to. Uh, get on the bandwagon of this new of this movement, continued movement. All right, so so what we're doing is 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 connected to the past, right? We're we're standing on the shoulders of those before us who've done some of the same things here and got us to this point, and the younger folks and other folks today need to see where they fit into, as you say, the current form of the movement and the current steps of the movement. And and let's go. Let's go. Because it can't, it can't, it, it ain't, we ain't gonna get there without them. <laughs> and and how, how ironic it is that we can now say, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, let's go. We gotta get that. Yes, yes. So um, you know, we're just energized and you know, we know that it's about bringing the young people to the table, but not only young adults, but all the adults that didn't vote. That's right. Mm. You know, there's a lot of them. 
And so they have to have a uh, they have to have a desire and an interest in this thing that we're doing that to us, to some people, is very, very special. And so I think that if we can share that vibration and 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 you know and have it be contagious that we just talk and continue to encourage and make it interesting because that's how I always get young people to engage is that you got to make it interesting to them. Yeah. So one of the things that um, I don't know who said this, you know, in our meeting that um, if, you, if you register to vote, you can get a raffle ticket, um, you know, yeah. some incentive for them to, uh, to participate. If you come to this rally, you're going to see a dynamite concert, something that looks like them. So we were talking earlier about how does that four page uh, uh, media piece look? It should look like them. It should have some words and wording that address them. And and uh, Jerome was saying earlier to you know talk about what they don't like, and then um, have something where it's a, a open opportunity for them to tell us what it is that they want. So right, and if and if it's going to be written like you want it written, that means they got to be at this table. Absolutely, That's right. absolutely. You got that right. Yeah. And so we had talked to a young person yesterday about developing a survey that would be them developing to find out how it is that they want this wording to be. So we'll work on that. We'll talk to you tomorrow at the meeting and uh, give us a little more guidance on, you know, what the next step is. Well, my, 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 all right. So what I so I'd like to say at this point, the next step is we need to get a few of them at this table. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. We got that, we, that, we, that would be my next them. step. Get a, get a few of them at the planning table. Okay. Right. All, right. All right. Okay. All right. Charles. We can do that. We can do that. All right. So we'll be, we'll be doing Zooms in, uh, tomorrow and the next day too, in order to bring them to the table. So you can hear what they got to say. And and want to do, and want to do absolutely exactly. okay. All right. Any so. other comments, uh, folks? Uh, George, Jerome, well, Doctor Jackson. Oh, go on, George. Yeah, well, I'm just just glad uh, in this moment. I hear a lot of spiritual uh, things happening, as he mentioned about looking at our past to uh, be able to go forward in our future. Kind of reminds me of Sankofa. Uh, yeah. I remember. I remember back in the day uh, when I was involved in, in getting uh, spiritually. I was at Columbia College, and the Harold Washington movement was just starting. And what we were going through as teens back back then, and we didn't have as much uh, social media and other uh, things going around to get to interfere with us being a part of some of the movements that went from the '60s to the '70s. Now our kids are so engaged and social media and and games and things of that nature that we have to sit up and reach them where they are so if we yes. have to go through television and networking and social media and things of that nature to get them back involved then we have to sit down and have zoom meetings and forums and things and put that where they're at to start using our social media networks and and hitting them because i've been working with the youth and uh, young adults, whether they were rapping and, and doing a lot of stuff for at least 20 to 30 years, mm -hmm. as I know the vet and uh, Wine has also been doing that. And we've reached a lot of youth and we still have those platforms that we can reach them on. And so yeah. now it's about training and letting them know the importance of just getting out to vote because a lot of times they feel like uh, we, we dropped the ball and then why should they be involved? So a lot of times they're taking things into their own hands and mm -hmm. uh, going out doing a lot of stuff that they really shouldn't be doing. So we have to get more back into education. And it's good uh, that Brandon is a, a educator and uh, he talked about uh, community uh, policing and getting out with the beat cops. And that's something that me, when I was going out to vote, I didn't know that about him and everything. And I'm learning more and more about the candidate and being a part 
of people that can go out and, and strike that fuse and light the fire under some of these teams. Yeah. It inspires me to know that we have a group of people that's educated, that's been around, the, the, uh, like being at the Swift Mansion. They know about how to deal with uh, uh, violence and gang violence in the community. They talk to a lot of people that's been incarcerated that they can bring to the table. As I was talking to a brother uh, 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 before we started this program, he had a rap video and I was like, well, we don't really do rap videos anymore because so many of the kids now are bringing guns out and other stuff and they think that's glorified because they look at so much social media. We have to start showing our, our youth and young adults how to show themselves in positive lights and see themselves uh, visually doing things that are positive and that will affect the change in our community. So when they start listening to politicians and people that actually go out and speak what they mean and, and act on it and bring those type of programs to the west side of Chicago, south side of Chicago, and get us all to unite, then we can really see things that are positively changing uh, our the way we see ourselves and the atmosphere we see. So when we look back at what happened in our past, we can see the struggles of some of our uh, activists that came about, you know, trying to create this change, and we can help usher in that change for a new generation of kids that's so caught up in the. Uh, we, we, I'm, I'm a baby boomer, so we yeah. have the Generation X, the Millennials, and the Generation Y, and the Alpha Generation. They grow up looking at the computers at three years old, and it's hard to take their minds off of something that they love to do, whether it's gaming or being on YouTube. I, I have a hard time just trying to get my children to get off of YouTube and the social media and uh, some of the buffoonery that's out there that they're looking at. And then that just captivates their mind. So we have to go back into training them on how important it is for them to guide their futures through politics and the things of that nature. Because I think somewhere along the line, we've lost uh, staying in contact with them. So we have right. to reach out to them at the things and use the avenues that they're used to seeing, the social media outlets, the uh, the Zooms, the YouTubes, the MySpaces, and the, uh, well, they're not that anymore, but Facebook. And a lot of things. Now that's the boomer in you. That's the boomer. In you. <laughs> yeah, that's the baby boomer in me right there. I, go back to I, I, I really started getting into the Black Planets, the MySpace, and as we go from one to the next, uh -huh. they're so engulfed in that. And that consumes 24 hours of their time. No, so but now, mm -hmm. no, sorry. We have, a lot of the, we have a lot of youth uh, that are working with us that are actually targeting those people through music and other stuff that's positive entertainment and stuff to get them involved so that they can actually hear a message that will there you go. change there what you they're go. doing. And there if we go. give them the outlets to learn and uh, release some of that tension, whether it's is having boys and girls club or uh, uh, things they have in the mental health. There's a lot of them that they're suffering from mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Whenever you take, mm -hmm. whenever you see five or six guys or ten guys mm -hmm. run out carjacking and going, and they don't care what the results are, what happens, those are some issues that whoever's the mayor, we have to talk about those issues and bring. Uh, other uh, remedies to relieve some of that stress that they're going through so that they are they know that we got their backs. So we have to, as generational uh, uh, people that's looking at a uh, right to passage or like lear learning from our ancestors, we have to see and try to instill those values in the youth of today so that they can listen and know that the baby boomers and other people that came through the 60s and 70s, like you said, that struggle is still here. But we have this to is that struggle. Still, this is just yeah, the latest still, iteration of that struggle. Yeah, yeah, we don't want we don't want to be the, some of the ones as we come up to just drop the ball because as we talk about violence, now Brandon is one of the younger guys that came with a, a, a remedy that I thought that we need to get back to having the police community uh, be part of what their community is and walking around having beat cops and stuff like that and bringing them into the community and uh, focusing those uh, so resources that they have all over the city, except for the places that they need to be and concentrating and using those uh, uh, resources to target some of the places where some of the violent activities actually happen and not just going out trying to shoot up everybody. And then we go back with that uh, uh, McCoy McDonald thing or George Floyd and the police. We Because even with the police, they're suffering too. Oh so yeah, we have everybody, to have a, a everybody. Relationship. Yeah, we have yeah. to build relationships where well, we trust them, 
they trust us and we trust each other as a community and a village. That way we can all feel like it's safe to go outside. Everybody, right. not only in Chicago, but cities around the world don't feel safe going out and participating because there's so much going on. And that's because of the, the images that a lot of times the, in, the internet allows us to be able to view and some of these kids to be able to view, whether it's the cartoons, whether it's the music videos, this, there you this, go. this, you know, this, you know, when they, the messages around, that they're receiving, yeah, those yeah. messages, messages are really crucial. The messages. We got to change yeah. the message. We got to change. Yeah. We got to stop doing, looking at television and tell, well, look at our visions. We got to tell our visions. Right. And just like uh, uh, Brandon is saying, you know, when people try to say he wants to take funding from the police, we've really got to drive it home that this is what he's talking about. What George is saying is having the police councils involved and uh, understanding that he's trying to divert some funding so that the first responders are the one on the scene when necessary. And that's to me, that meaning, and we just need to drive that home as well. Yeah, how do you reimagine policing? That's all that's about. Yeah, reimagine. Right. I like the reimagining the police. Yeah, reimagining and, and policing. policing. Yeah, right. and so I remember when when I was uh, in kindergarten, I remember my mother telling me I had to walk home from school by myself. She said if I got <laughs> lost. Ask Doctor Friend, uh, what was the officer, officer friendly to take me home? And I remember that's how we used to view the police yeah. as officer friendly. Right. But today, these kids, these young people, young adults, do not see police as officer friendly. That's well, right. you know, I don't either. I ain't no <laughs> young kid. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. That that's why that's why we have to have more engagement <laughs> with with some of the the police officers and 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 talk just like they were doing caps. We have to have a community engagement with talking and having the forums where they could actually talk about some of the things that they would see. Even the police officers, they're all gathering around a young individual that just got shot, going on a routine, probably domestic uh, violence case, and and he's just he's just in his thirties. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. that's a lot for all of them to go through. We don't want that anger or violence to translate on how they deal with problems in the street because a lot of what most people said they was worried about violence, gang violence. So we have to look at like being at the Swift Mansion, even mm -hmm. knowing what struggles people came came through from the '60s to right now, and we don't want to go back to where we're well, out in the street. You're talking about the 1860s, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of that. Oh, yeah. that. That's a lot of yeah. anger building, but it's not. That's it's, right. It's not just in the black communities. It's yeah. all over the city. You know, yeah. if we go one one beat to the left or one beat to the right. We're in mm. uh, Humboldt Park or we're in uh, uh, Douglas Park, and so if you go over there, we we you're too close to the Mexicans, too close to the Puerto Ricans. That's why we need to centralize having places like Garfield Park as a central location in the city that all can come and be welcome to understand what Brandon's talking about and working with other individuals that's black, brown, and all of Chicago to mm. unite, mm. as well mm. as going on the South Side. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, South, oh, yeah. South Side, definitely, this definitely. Is important. Yeah. And so that, that Southwest corridor, we should really look at how we can bridge the gap of bringing all of those individuals so that we feel safe even with them, they don't get worried until something goes and spills over into the, the north side or, or downtown. Uh, you know, they just had a bank robbery earlier, at, at, you know, downtown at the, uh, I think it was uh, Fifth Wacker Third Bank. And, Wacker and Matt, yeah, Fifth yeah, Third. That's, yeah, that's like, mm -hmm. it's like they're just doing things right now that we really need to discuss and give these young individuals outlets and give them uh, 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 resources that, that we can catch them when they're coming from 12. 13 years old and start mentoring them and reshaping their minds and actually showing them that they're the older generation is still looking out for what we do. We just didn't leave them out there to, uh, to, to dry. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and one of the biggest things we got to do is change the messaging that they are receiving oh, through yes. the games, through the games they play, through the music they're listening to, to, to the activities they attend. 
we got to change the messaging. Right. You know, they're getting the wrong messages. And, right. and, and, and there are those who do believe in subliminal. That's exactly what they're but doing. See, yeah. so and, but, right. And through this stuff, through these games, through this music, you know, through the stuff that they participate in, they are, they are getting these subliminal images, right. subliminal, but that's subliminal why, messaging that's, why, that's right. got them acting up. That's, that's why it's good that a person like Brandon has that educational background because you can start dealing with dysfunctionalities within young adults, youth, and even some of our elder uh, uh, pe people that's out there. So we have to bridge that gap and bring that educational uh, uh, component back into uh, dealing with some of our youth and uh, the people that are out there that's not voting and show them and teach them why it's so important, the struggle that everybody went through just to have their right to vote and to just not uh -huh. go out and vote. Because I think it, even at one point, Lori Lightfoot said, oh, well, you're not going to vote for her. Don't go out at all. Oh, wow. Well, that, 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 that was reported. That, that was reported somewhere, but we don't know if that was true. Okay. okay. Well, I, I know <laughs> you know, we can't believe everything we hear, right? <laughs> we can't believe everything we see. What you see. <laughs> yeah. so, so a lot of that, we want to we want to make sure we bring out the images that we need to stand strong there and you go. vote. There and, you go. And, and listen to the messages. So right. if we listen to great messages, it'll naturally resonate in our spirit. Right. And that's what we got to present. That's what we got to yes. present. Great messages, great images. And uh, I mean, cause we can we can do the subliminal game too. That's you know right. I mean? With the positive and that's stuff. What we need to do. We need to do that. Yeah. We need to use that drone. Drone. Tell us what you think about the strategy that we're going to be employing to bring the young people out, the youth, excuse me, the young adults. What do you say? Jerome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that, that, you know, sometimes we have to, uh, uh, the point is that we need to execute what we're talking about. And that is, is that uh, we have to do a timeline on if we can increase these young, uh, what are the points that we're going to focus on to make sure that we're going to get them? Because where we are is just here. There's, if we look at the statistics, there's probably a, over a thousand young folks that are over 18. How many are we planning on trying to get in such a short time? So we have to have a, um, a timeline to say that, hey, we're going to recruit five a day. In a day or whatever the case, because the clock is moving so fast. Twenty-eight days is nothing, right? It's nothing. That's true. But it's right. enough. But it's if enough. We're, if we're talking about the past, yeah, and that's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. what, are, what is the strategy? And I'm giving you a strategy. We need to do. I don't care if it's a two-day sur survey of going to these young folks and asking them, asking them. Why are they not voting? And so after that, what should we do to get them to vote? Because we don't know if they are uh, uh, registered. And if you go to them at this point in time, it's not important to them. Because they don't care about politics, and they don't know what politics is. Right, they don't know what it is. And they don't understand the importance of knowing what it is. Because, Charles, when you say that that politics is the, uh, or economics is the division of the of the political pie. You say what I say, that I say, economics- I say, agree with that? Would I agree that, that economics is, po what, could you say that again? The, 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 <laughs> the politics is the division of the economic pie. Oh, oh, I, you know. I, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, politics is the is the big broad brush. The big broad, big, the big broad, broad brush. paint brush. Okay, uh, uh. and it and it and it paints how the political system works. Is that it paints you... it paints everything? Okay, okay. You take the political brush. You know that paint that's on the political brush covers everything. Okay, mm -hmm. I get you. 
housing, economics, health and mental wellness, um, education, resources, crime, whatever, whatever you're talking about, that brush covers it. That's right. And we covers got it and one, covers it. Right. And we've got to be the one to add the color. Mm. Yeah, All change the colors. The colors. Change, yes. change the colors. Get out them shades of uh, darkness. And let's, uh, you know, yes. <laughs> add some light, some bright I, colors. <laughs> I, I'd be interested to hear what you have Sunshine. to say, Doctor Doctor uh, Jackson, because uh, you you have that you have that uh, program for Inglewood because you're trying to stop crime or the uh, have people report people that are doing crime in Inglewood. Tell Charles about your project. Well, let me just say first before I do that, that I'm definitely in agreement with educating the youth about the importance of power, political power, because without that, what you end up having is you end up having poverty. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, the violence, it runs businesses out of the neighborhood. It runs retailers out the neighborhoods. It runs people out of the neighborhood. At one time, uh, for example, 11% um, of the Inglewood population were African American. By 1970, 96% of the population was uh, African American, but it was a higher degree of unemployment. By 2000, Inglewood's population, which has been as high as 90,000 in the early 20th century, is now down to 40,000. And that's important to realize because at one time, Inglewood was the number two community when it came to economic development in Chicago. And now it's number two comes to violence. Mm. Um, so it's important for the community to control the community community doesn't control the community, then it's some serious problem that's going to be taking place. Uh, and going back to Holland, the organization I represent is the Community Peace Program, which is a not-for-profit organization that seeks to eliminate or greatly curtail the homicides in Inglewood community. And it wants to do this by sponsoring Inglewood by the Stars Talent Show fundraisers which raises money, run money raising that place in the fund. Anyone that's murdered in the Inglewood community, there's an automatic reward for the apprehension and conviction of said purpose. Community got to come together to uh, curtail police violence, gang violence, domestic violence, just children in general being murdered. Communities got to come together and they got to educate the community. Community got to educate itself remind himself about how violence is hurting everybody. everybody. Everybody, everybody. And I think that those uh, police councils that was just developed, we have to really connect with them to help them do their job. Because if they're the catalyst between the community and the police, then I would like to, to see them take that position seriously so that we do bridge that gap. And I think that's what they're there for. So let's, you know, the purpose of them being there, let's, you know, put it to them and, and see what it is that we can take back to the community through our eyes, through their eyes, and through the police's eyes. And let's make it work. And we can help Brandon do that. Okay, well, um, I think that uh, we see the work that we have cut out for us and that we're going to embark on this struggle because we want to rebuild our city. We want to teach our young adults about the politics of Chicago. And uh, Brandon, we think, is the person that can help us do that. So we're going to close, ladies and gentlemen, this show, and we'll be back again Probably tomorrow. Probably. <laughs> once we realize, once we put in place our our strategy to uh, make Brandon Johnson our next mayor of Chicago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. And this is uh this God is the at the table, the best in my opinion. 
and I think my opinion counts. So uh, on that note, uh, Brandon Johnson has my support. And uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, Charles Howland, this is your first time coming to the show. And welcome. But maybe, and, uh, but maybe not the last time. No, of can't course be the last one. And not be the last one. And, 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 and let me know, let me know what you let me know what you put in that hat and make that hat go my like that. We need some of it. <laughs> We need your expertise, brother. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I, well, I'm here because I'm here to, you know, do whatever I can do to help us uh, do what we got to do. All right. So we'll talk tomorrow. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Can I say one thing? Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Charles. Yes, sir. You haven't seen me in over 20 years. Uh-huh. Jerome. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I ain't seen a lot of people in over 20 years. <laughs> I know. I used to have a drum and bugle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, why? So, how you been in uh, these uh -oh. last 20 years? <laughs> and how you doing? I'm still here, bro. Oh, Uh-huh. Hey so Charles, he's got the firehouse over on Laramie and Chicago Avenue. That's where George, J uh, Jerome, and Wanda film every Wednesday. And I've been coming over there a couple of times. But, oh, okay. Uh, All right. That's the All hub. Right. That's All the right. hub. That's the hub. hub. Oh, okay. That's you. Right. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with the hub. I didn't know that was you though, because I ain't, you know, I've been like a hermit for the last 20 years. Same here. <laughs> it's good to be out. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, uh, uh, as you know, as, as I just want to put this last piece out. As you know, block clubs are integral, integral to whatever we're talking about here. In terms of community development and safety, all right. And working with the police, so we got to strengthen these black clubs and make sure they stand up, cause a lot of the perpetrators are in our houses. That's <laughs> right. And unless we stand up and 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 do something about that, we ain't gonna affect nothing. That's, that's, that's right. right. That's and they're standing right. out there that's right on the corner in front of your house. Yeah, they coming. They coming from us, you guys. It's yeah. our sons, it, our brothers. Yeah, everybody, know everybody know who Pookie. Everybody know who Pookie and Ray Ray is. Just like, hey, <laughs> That's there right. Go over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got as part of this piece, we got to look at how do we strengthen these black clubs and right. help them get the authority and power they need to do what they got to do That's with their right. house on their block. Yeah, I, 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 I used that funding. Part right. of that defunding. Um, what Mayor Lightfoot did do was divert some of that funding to block clubs. So block clubs got to understand there's funding sources through uh, the city that they can access. And maybe it'll be leaflets that they can do, uh, community event, you know, to come out and show the, the minority that they are the majority. Yeah. Well, well, again, just as we have to reimagine uh, policing, we got to reimagine block clubs. Right. That's, That's right. right. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. All right. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow because we're on the campaign trail. So that means we'll be doing a lot of All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, y'all. Good. Good. good see, uh, well, good seeing you again, Mr. Altman. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Okay. Yeah.